Hello and welcome to lecture 3 of Electric Current in Phys 1204. We've already seen some of the simplest circuits, circuits containing only batteries and capacitors, in a previous unit. Now we're going to look at some more of the simplest circuits, circuits which include resistors. We need a few new symbols for our circuit diagrams because now we have resistors and you've probably already seen them on assignments but I haven't talked about them in the video lecture. We're going to use switches. There are devices which we call resistors which are very common in circuits and which are just there to resist the flow of current. However, Anything with current flowing through it has a resistance, and so often when we use the resistor symbol we're not actually talking about a device that's intended to be a resistor, we may be talking about the resistance of some other device. For example, we could be talking about a non-ideal battery, in other words a battery with a non-negligible internal resistance, in which case we would draw on the circuit diagram a battery and its resistance in series with each other. We've already looked at the fact that current only flows in a complete circuit, and to understand switches you need to keep that in mind. A switch introduces a break into the circuit which can be closed, and so when the switch is open we say no current flows, but when it's closed a switch acts just like a wire. Any circuit branch containing an open switch can just be ignored because no current will move through it. So for example, in this circuit, when the switch is open, it's completely equivalent to this simpler circuit where the branch containing R3 is just gone. But as soon as we close the switch, now it's equivalent to this circuit. Here's another type of switch. This switch has two settings. In this setting it's equivalent to the circuit which contains the branch with R2 in it, but when the switch is put to the other position, the branch with R2 no longer matters and the circuit only contains the branch with R3. We have several new units to talk about. A current is an amount of charge per unit time, and so that, that must be in coulombs per second, which we define as the ampere. We'll talk more about it in the next unit. Ohm's law gives us our units for resistance. It is clearly a potential difference divided by a current, and so it must be in volts per, and a current is in amperes, and that is defined as an ohm, which we use the capital Greek omega for. Well, just as we did for capacitors in an earlier unit, let's look at how to reduce circuits containing resistors. So let's start with two resistors in series and reduce to an equivalent circuit. And remember what that means. It means that in this equivalent circuit, whatever the current is through the battery is the same as the current through the battery in our original circuit, and so the battery is doing work at the same rate, and we're finding what resistor would be needed to replace these two resistors such that that's true. So there are some good habits to get into, and in this circuit they really won't matter much, but it's good to get in the habit anyway. It is always good to indicate which way you think the current runs through each resistor. Now, in this case, it's pretty clear. There's only one battery, and so the current must be running from its negative terminal out of its positive terminal, and that sets the direction that the, that the current must go in the circuit. In more complicated circuits, it's often less clear which way the currents will go, but it's important to indicate anyway which way you think they might be going, even if you're not sure, because it's setting a sign convention. Because remember, what's going on here is that this is the low potential side of the battery, and this is the high potential side of the battery, or in other words, we would call these the plus side and the minus side, and that means we have to get back down to the original potential that we started at down here, and so 
that tells you which is the higher and lower potential side of the resistors. So some people like to indicate the current direction, some people like to put a plus and minus on the high and low potential sides of their resistors, either or it's a matter of taste. I'm going to tend to indicate my current directions, that's what I prefer. So now there are several things we know. There are no junctions, so Kirchhoff's junction rule is trivial. It is the same as saying that all of these currents are the same. And so now the only other thing we have to work with is the loop law, and there is only one loop. It's this. Now do not confuse this loop with the current direction. This is the direction I am imagining that I'm walking around the circuit, and it doesn't have to match the direction that the current is going, although in this case it does. So I will now write Kirchhoff's loop law. I go up epsilon as I go through the battery, and then I go down I1R1 as I go through the first resistor, and I go down I2R2 as I go through the second resistor, and there is the total sum of the potential differences around the loop. And I'm going to note that those I's are all the same, and so if I were to solve for the current, whereas if I do the same thing over in the equivalent circuit, I simply have this, and comparing those two, I can see that the equivalent resistance is just the sum of the two individual resistances. Now let's do resistors in parallel, and I'm going to do all the same things. I note that there is some current I through the battery, both in the equivalent and the original circuit, and again it's fairly obvious that the current through the battery must be this way, and so it must come around and pass through both resistors like so. However, note that it's no longer true that these currents are the same. What we have is a junction law which says that the current into this junction, which is I, is equal to the sum of the currents out. Note that it's sometimes more convenient to sum up all the currents with the convention that currents in are positive and currents out are negative, that's totally equivalent. Now I'm going to do the loop law, and I have three loops that I could imagine walking around. I could walk around this loop, I could walk around this loop, or I could walk around this loop. It's going to turn out that I do not need all three of those loops to be able to solve this circuit, but I'm going to write down all three anyway because there are several points to make. So I'm going to start with the orange loop. So I start off by walking up through the battery, and then I come down in potential as I go through resistor R2, and that gets me back to where I started. And similarly for the green loop. And finally I'm going to do the blue one, and this is actually the one I think is the most interesting at the moment, because note that I'm going through resistor 1 opposite the current. Now, Think of the ski hill analogy. If you're walking along a hill and you're not sure for some reason whether you're walking uphill or downhill, look at the skiers. If you're going opposite the direction that the skiers are going, you're almost certainly walking uphill. And so going around this loop, we go up, I1, R1, but now we're going with the skiers through R2, so I2 minus I2, R2 and there are all my loop laws for this circuit. So, as always, we're going to compare our solution to this with our solution to the equivalent resistance, which looks the way it always does. 
And note that we have three unknowns. There are three currents, but we have four equations. But if you play around with them, that you'll see that the third of these loop law equations is just the sum of the other two, and so it isn't an independent equation. So I'm now going to solve these, and you should too, and compare answers. And here is our solution, that 1 over the equivalent resistance is the sum of the inverse resistances of the individual resistors. And the point of this is that you can use this to do circuit analysis, but also the process of it shows several things about parallel resistors. In particular, note how the potential differences across them were the same, and the currents will not be the same. Well, once again, let's check your understanding. So look at this circuit in the diagram, and let's compare the currents flowing through resistors 1 and 2. Which one, if either, is the greater current?